So in this video, we're going to find the electric field of an infinite sheet of charge. And in particular, we're going to say that the charge, the surface charge density is sigma or positive sigma, because we're going to assume that it's positive charge. So the first question we should ask when we're doing this type of problem is, do we have any symmetry? And in this problem, yes, we have yet yeah, we have tons of symmetry. In particular, we've got what's called 2D translational symmetry. So if this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis, if I move back and forth in x, back and forth in y, because this is an infinite plane, an infinite uh, sheet of charge, nothing changes about my life. So we can also use this symmetry to figure out what the electric field might look like at some point above the sheet of charge. In particular, all of the charge on the left-hand side will produce, you know, there'll be a little bit of electric field from, say, this bit of charge here, a little bit of electric field from this bit of charge here, but the X component of those pieces of charge will be canceled out by the little bit of charge over here, the little bit of charge over here, and so we're only going to be left with a vertical component, a Z component to the electric field. So this is my Z axis. So because this is symmetric in X and it's symmetric in Y, the X components and the Y components of the electric field cancel out and we're left with only a Z component to the electric field. So on the top, the electric field is gonna be pointing up, but on the bottom, because we have charge above, the electric field is going to be pointing away from that charge. So the electric field will be pointing down when we're below the plate or the sheet of charge. And because this has infinite symmetry, we can use Gauss's law to solve this problem. So our integrals are gonna be nice and simple. And because we have enough symmetry, we can use Gauss's law to find the electric fields. And so let's do that. Let's just redraw our plane over here, nice and big. And this plane has some positive charge on it. So it's got a charge density sigma. The first thing we need to ask if we're gonna use Gauss's law is what kind of Gaussian surface do I want? So we know that above the sheet, the electric field is gonna be pointing up. And below the sheet, the electric field is going to be pointing down. So as long as we have a surface that is flat on the top and the bottom, we should be good. And so I'm going to choose a cylinder because cylinder is a nice, simple surface. It's only got three sides to it, a top, a bottom, and the wraparound side. So I think a cylinder will probably be the easiest surface to use. And so I'm going to enclose some of this sheet of charge in my Gaussian surface, which is a cylinder. And it's going to stretch all the way underneath so that we're fully enclosing some of the charge. And I'm going to say that that cylinder has a height on the top. I'm going to call that H. It's got a radius. Let's be plenty creative and call that R. And on the bottom, my height is exactly the same. So I'm gonna say that this is H as well. That'll just make our lives nice and easy. Now, part of the trick for this problem is that you might think, well, if the plate is infinite, then don't we need an infinite surface? Uh, but no, it turns out that as long as we enclose some amount of this surface, we'll be able to figure out what the electric field is because some things will cancel and life will be great. So now that I've got my Gaussian surface, we can apply Gauss's law, which says that the electric flux is equal to the enclosed charge divided by epsilon naught. And so let's start with the electric flux. So the electric flux, we know we can get by integrating E dot dA over our Gaussian surface. And here we've got three separate integrals to do. So we have to worry about the surface on the sides of the cylinder. We have to worry about the surface on the top and we have to worry about the surface on the bottom. So I'm gonna start with the sides. Now, since we said the electric field is pointing straight up and the, our dA element is pointing straight out 
on the sides because DA always points outward away from the surface, then E dot DA on the side is just equal to zero because they're perpendicular to each other. And any two vectors that are perpendicular to each other, their dot product is zero. So the flux from the side is just equal to zero, which is great. That makes our life so much easier. So now let's worry about the top. So what is E dot DA on the top side? Well, our electric field is pointing straight up and similarly, our DA is also pointing straight up. So here, this is our electric field. Here, this is DA. So the dot product is just equal to E times DA. Now, we don't know if this E will be dependent on the height above the cylinder. So I'm going to write this as E as a function of H times DA, just to remind myself that it might be dependent on the height. So we should, we should keep that in mind. But because we have symmetry, this E as a function of H is constant everywhere on the top surface because the top surface has a constant H. And so if we integrate both sides, we can pull out the E, and this is just equal to E as a function of H times the integral of dA. And I absolutely love these integrals because the integral of dA over our top surface is just the area of the top surface. And so I will creatively call that a top. So this is equal to E of H times our top area. Now, what about our flux on the bottom? Well, our electric field we said was going to be pointing straight down and our area vector dA on the bottom is also pointing straight down. So just like the top E dot dA is E just E times dA. And so everything is the same. Uh, the flux, so we can say that the flux on the bottom is the same as the flux on the top, which is just E as a function of H times the area of the bottom. And this is, Im this is important because I said that the, the bottom surface is a distance H away from the plate and the top surface is a distance H away. So this is what lets me uh, say that they're they're both just equal to e of h, so some distance h away. And so we, now we have all of our fluxes. So the side flux was zero. The top flux was e as a function of h times the top area. And the bottom flux was also e as a function of h times, and I'm, I'm going to call this a top because the top area and the bottom area are the same. If this is a cylinder that doesn't change its, its width or its radius as we go from top to bottom, and that would be an absolutely horrible cylinder. And so our total flux, phi e, is just the sum of these three. So zero plus e of h times a top plus e of h times e top, which is two times e as a function of h times the area of the top of the cylinder. And it's really important to make sure that you add up all of the flux because Gauss's law is only valid as long as we make sure to get the flux out of our entire surface. So it's very common for people to miss either the top or the bottom or not even think about the sides when they're doing this problem and just to laser focus in on part of the surface. But we have to worry about the entire surface. Now, lastly, what is our enclosed charge? So what is Q enclosed? Q enclosed is equal to what? Well, the amount of charge that we're enclosing is just right here. So it's this area multiplied. So we know that the charge for an area charge is just the surface charge density times the area that we're taking, that we're figuring out where the now, lastly, what is our enclosed charge? Well, our surface is only getting a very small amount of the charge on the infinite plane. And the amount of area that we're covering is just this, which is the same as the top area. And so the total, in ch the total amount of charge enclosed by that is just our area charge density, which we called sigma, times our top area. 
And so now we have everything we need to apply Gauss's law. We have the total electric flux and we have the charge enclosed. So if we plug it in, we see that two times our electric field, which might be a function of H, times the top area is equal to our charge enclosed, which is sigma times our top area, all divided by epsilon naught. And now notice that the areas conveniently cancel. And if we divide each side by two, then we get our electric field as a function of H is just sigma over two epsilon naught. And so this is really interesting because this actually isn't a function of H at all. This is a constant. This is a constant. So it doesn't matter if we are, you know, a millimeter away from the plate or a million miles away from our plate. It's going, we're going to have the same electric field. Our electric field is not a function of H. And so that's really cool. And that's very unique to this infinite sheet of, of charge. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated, and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind-the-scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like-minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.